Webster and Simmons in the middle of the front row. And Stroyer on the second row, the Dutchman with Stephen Isaf, the American passenger. He's got his normal passenger replaced. Well, it's not even a normal passenger, is it, Keith? Because uh, the man... No, no passenger is normal. <laughs> <laughs> Harry Herstenger, apologies to Dutch viewers for my pronunciation, has taken over this year as uh, Egbert's regular passenger. Unfortunately, Harry got himself a, a broken collarbone. Well, that was a bit of a sloppy start there. It really looked like to me that uh, our man Stroyer was forcing his way from the second row. He'd got a wheel spinning in all sorts of shapes to try and get past the slow starting front row of the grid as they enter into turn two. Oh dear. With the dust rising. I can see Abbott there in fourth place. Yeah, Abbott and Smith number six. And that's Webster in front. That looks like Webster's in front, if I'm not mistaken. It looks like Webster and Simmons it is. Brilliant. I am so pleased, the Englishman. <laughs> Yeah, and um, Bornhausen Hiller, number 12, was showing well. That's the best I've seen them do for the time. time. Michel in the lead. L.A. Michel back in third place. And Stroyer and Essaf in second. That's Egbert Stroyer with an American stand-in passenger, Stephen Essaf, who was an American champion sidecar driver four or five years ago. Well, I think what we've got to bear in mind here that the pole setter, which was Alain Michel, currently in third position, was only one tenth of a second in front of second place man on the grid. That's the leader at the moment. This man, Steve Webster. And Gavin Simmons, the passenger, of course. Took over last year, had a full year off work uh, to attack the World Championships. This year he's working again full time, as well as doing the GPs. Well, of course, being an ex-solo rider, I always forget about passengers, which is uh, rather cruel, considering they're 50% of the job, really, aren't they, in this particular they game? Are. Look at Stroyer on the brakes. He's always been deadly on the brakes, but Stroyer turning tight inside Webbo. Has Stroyer got the line? Alan Michel looking threatening in third place. Webster holds them into turn one. Well, of course, what we've got to bear in mind, this being the first side Grand car Grand Prix of the year, that these men are very enthusiastic to get stuck in, aren't they? I mean, they're all out for the opening points. I'm wondering whether Egbert Stroyer there in second place. Darren Dixon, number 17, up to four. Born Hoston Hill at 12, Kumagaya and Houghton in sixth. Excellent show. That's a very unflattering picture of Steve Webster you just saw. Well, never mind, it won't hurt him in this particular case. Webster finished second here last year in this opening Grand Prix. Obviously trying to go one better. Let's have a look and see what's going on with Mr Webster. Steve Webster, three times a world champion, leads the American Grand Prix. Let's check out his record. One of the, one of the heroes of British motorcycle racing, Steve Webster, champion in 1998. <laughs> He's well, not I... that old, Keith. <laughs> <laughs> I was looking at the spelling of passenger. He's, he's not Dutch. <laughs> <laughs> Our multilingual graphics, Whoa, look, you at, see. look at Stroyer, he's having a go through. Now, I'm wondering how long this standing American passenger, Stephen Isaf, can last. But it's a very, very physical, very physical uh, game passengering. <laughs> A Grand Prix sidecar. Well, well, remains to be seen. I still think these men must put their brains in the toolbox when they step into the sidecar of these things. I just, you wouldn't get me on there for all the tea in China. We'll try and do that later in the season. Then. I'm sure you will. <laughs> oh, <laughs> now that was a shot and a half. Webster cut very, very tight there. Put his passenger over the dirty stuff, and uh, Stroyer didn't even have a square inch to get under. Webbo, the fastest lap for Steve Webster. It can't be by much, though, Keith. Oh, miraculous, look. Well, correct spellings. And here we are back with the profile of Steve Webster and over to Julian. Yep, three times a world champion. Third last year, beaten by Stroyer by just one point for that, uh, that number two plate. Steve Webster from York, near York. Uh, Gavin Simmons is passenger for the first time last year. The three world titles were won, of course, with Tony Hewitt. Egbert Stroyer in second place, another multiple world champion. Dutch, of course, he's from, he's from Assen, where the Grand Prix is held. 
he, was, he had a hat trick of world titles uh, before before Webster. He ended up second last year, as we've just said. Uh, Egbert did not finish this Grand Prix last year. He had a slight disagreement with his passenger about two thirds of the way round. Yes, and for anybody that's seen Egbert, and Elaine Michelle goes underneath Stroyer there. Underneath Ooh. Stroyer, Egbert Stroyer is forced into third place. Serves him right, never mind. <laughs> I'm sure he'll come back and uh, sort out Elaine Michelle in about two seconds flat. Uh, the, the last thing Egbert will be worrying about is that poor bloke who is the stand-in passenger. And let's face it, American sidecar racing isn't on the same planet as their solar racing. Alan Michel, number one on his sidecar, and a lot of people are very, very pleased by that. He's now admitting to being 39 years of age, Alain Michel. Winner, of course, last year, 17 Grand Prix wins, second in the title chase four times, just like Randy Mamala. But unlike Mamala, Alain has finally got a number one plate. English passenger Simon Birchall from Ghoul in the northeast of the country. Well, there we are again with the scenic route. I, I think the director in uh, US television obviously likes the greenery around Laguna Seca. Oh, we're back with the race. Well, there's a surprise. Alain, Alain Michel, one of the best tuners. He, he was, you know, Keith. Alain Michel was French 500cc solo champion many years ago before he took up sidecars. And a very good motocrosser. Well, back with the main man at the moment, Steve Webster leads. And I hope he stays there. I shouldn't be too biased, of course, but... Uh... <laughs> It's difficult, isn't it, with where Steve Webster's concerned. Uh, I always regard Webster as a, as a true sportsman, a man who took uh, his world title defeat last year as, as well as, as any sportsman can take defeat, I'd say. Well, I've got to say that uh, I didn't have Webbo actually tip for the top, and I'll apologise to him personally for that when I see him, but um, I, I had to bring into question his sponsorship and his mechanical problems of last year, and oh my <laughs> God, I've just ripped the arm off the chair in the commentary box as Elaine Michelle looked like he was going to push Webster's passenger out of the chair. Oh, Michelle, where's he got the horsepower from? He builds fast engines, Elaine Michelle. Yeah, but <laughs> Webster is good on the turns. Take that, you Frenchman. <laughs> Keith, the, these outfits use 500cc four-cylinder engines just like the Solos. Uh, they're not as fast at the top end, I believe, but my God, they go round corners quickly. Well, that's absolutely right. They are sort of uh, halfway between... A... Oh, dear me, I can hardly speak for watching this. Elaine Michelle's getting it all shapes. Well, yeah, they're probably about 155 mile an hour here at, at Laguna, which is uh, pretty fast, <laughs> being that close to the ground. But... And Darren <laughs> Dixon, Keith, look, as you said, Darren Dixon in fourth place. That is a remarkable showing by the young European sidecar champion in his first sidecar Grand Prix. Well, of course, if this carries on at the front, he might find himself in first place in a couple of laps because <laughs> <laughs> we've got the Dutchman at the back and the Lady Michelle, Michelle looks for the inside. Well, Michelle is really going for it here, but the, the thing about Webster is he never never gives best for more than about a second, does he? He does, does he? And would you believe that Alan Michelle and Steve Webster are the best of friends? They stay at each other's houses when they're travelling, they exchange information, ultimate respect for each other, but you'd never guess it on a racetrack. Well, I'm very pleased to hear that, but the Dutchman, of course, Stroyer, <laughs> he goes to all lengths to get past people. I've seen him on the grass, I've seen him on... Yes. Halfway down pit lane trying to make a pass. Alain Michel leads, Steve Webster second, Egbert Stroyer third, and that's not to mention their passengers. And I will mention their passengers since you asked. And I see Simon Birchall, the passenger on number one, Gavin Simmons, the passenger on the number three outfit there in second place, and Mr. Esaf, the American. Oh, there we have Larry Coleman. Very interesting chat we have there, nattering away to himself. Yes, he's... Um... <laughs> We saw Fine, him. good. Yes, very good. Thank you. Over and out. <laughs> Back with Elaine Michelle, number one, leading Steve Webster, who is aiming to be number one. Again. I'm looking for the inset of Egbert Stroyer. Not a pretty sight. Would you fight with that man? Egbert this year has uh, finally given up using the Yamaha crankcases he's used right through his career. Very skilled engineer and tuner, Egbert. He used to build his own reed blocks for, uh, for the Yamaha engine. He's finally given up that struggle and he's using the Krauser crankcases. 
in much, uh, in other words, he now has effectively the same engine set up as the other outfits in the, in the Grand Prix. Well, I think you touched on an interesting point anyway, Julian, there, with the fact that these boys, unlike the solo riders, work on their own bikes, work in their own teams. The actual pay scales that these men get paid aren't particularly good, considering it looks like we're going to be back with Larry in a minute. <laughs> no, here we are, back with the race again. Thank God for that. The Americans that, that, do that have a different guided, way of... Guided to an egg destroyer sidecar. Yeah. Attention. We've had the trees, the scenery, the inside of Larry, and we're back with the sidecar race again. There's a how many Californians does it take to change a light bulb joke here somewhere, but I think we'll lift it out. Alain Michel and Simon Virgil, the world champions, lead the US Sidecar Grand Prix. From Steve Webster and Gavin Simmons. I won't say of England, I should say of Yorkshire. I think they'd like that more. At Egbert Stroyer with standing passenger Stephen Asaf. Now, Asaf, I beg his pardon. Now, Mr. Asaf must be going a considerable, <laughs> a considerable amount faster than he's ever been before in his life on a sidecar. He may have been an American sidecar champion, but American sidecar racing is nowhere near European standard. It's not anywhere near their solo standard, not on the same planet. Yes, it's like Americans trying to play football, really, isn't it? Yes. Well, Egbert Stroyer brings up the rear in the trio of um, battling sidecars. If I was Mr Asaf, I'd have my head well buried <laughs> under the fairing, I think. Uh, yeah, Rob Beeland, number four, if you see him, is not up with uh, his perennial rivals here. Rolf flipped the outfit in practice, uh, I believe dodging the debris from an earlier crash and has a damaged shoulder. Rolf is out there racing, uh, but he himself thinks it'll just be to try and pick up a few points. Well, Elaine Michelle might well be leading this race at the moment, but uh, Steve Webster has got other ideas. About a foot off the rear end of the bike. Oh, Edward. Well, there's Mr. Stroyer sticking in a quick lap. Not quite as fast as the uh, pole man Alain Michel set, but uh, a decent distance off of it. The sidecar guys do say it's impossible to race flat out for the full distance round here. Uh, and they have admitted in the past to uh, making a show of it to start with before getting down to the serious racing at about half distance. Well, of course, the ballast men are, uh, have to be a bit like monkeys, really, and probably fitter than shifting from side to side the actual g-forces that these bikes are pulling in the corner another wonderful picture from our american director there yes we've got That's a tree the to the right That's a, a, a... he's obviously pressed the wrong button we should have a motorcycle sometime round in the next few moments oh. Oh. Yeah, they come into the corkscrew let's Great. see that they have to change direction very quickly here against uh, considerable g-force as keith ewan pointed out Yes, he's quite quick at keeping up with them as well, isn't he? Let's have another look back. Here we are, Les Michel. We're trying to get a look at the passengers crawling all over the rear end of the bike. You'll see that the passenger shifts to the, to the sidecar wheel when that wheel is on the inside of the turn to try and keep the wheel down. Obviously, the idea is to keep the wheel down. Then he shifts back again over the rear wheel of the bike, which is the driving wheel with the power delivery to try and stop the wheel from spinning. So wherever the passenger sits on the bike really dictates what the driver can do with the bike. Stroyer looking up the inside of Webster. Webbo cuts his nose off. Yes, the passenger's fore and aft movement uh, dictates wheel spin or front tyre adhesion out of corners as well. It's a very subtle balancing, balancing act the passenger is performing the entire time. Well, of course, passengers have been known to fall out, but uh, not in... Uh... Not often, I must say, but they have been known to fall out, and, of course, the driver doesn't realise that until he gets to the corner and finds himself with no grip. Confirmation of the top six. We've got the top three in our picture almost full-time, but Darren Dixon is holding off the Egloff twins from Switzerland still for fourth place. I have a feeling the Egloffs uh, might have Darren shortly. There's the world champion, Simon Birchall on the left, Alain Michel on the right. Into the corkscrew goes number one, Alain Michel. Let's take a look at the race order. Michel and Birchall lead, Webster and Simmons second, Stroyer and standing man Esaf third, the two Dixons still fourth. And we're going to take a break now, back with the rest of the Sidecar Grand Prix live on Eurosport in a moment. 
leaders, the top four, Michelle Webster, Stroyer and Dixon. You caught sight just then of number 22, Werner Klaus and Thomas Schroeder, stopped beside the track. They didn't figure in the points, though. Number seven, Kumagaya and Houghton. They were showing in the points earlier, Keith. That's yeah. the Japanese-English team. Kumagawa has been at it for a long time and is a very, very good and established sidecar runner. That's a great shame. It's obviously very disappointing to not finish the first Grand Prix of the year. It puts you at a, a big disadvantage for the World Championship points. Back at the front of the field, Alan Michel still leads Steve Webster and Egbert Stroyer now dropping back a little in third place. I'm wondering, Keith, if they've decided, right, that's enough of the, uh, the jousting for the crowd, as it were. And they're now getting down to some serious... Yeah, 137.8 for Alain Michel. Nowhere near practice time, but uh, considerably faster than the we've seen so far in uh, this race. Well, I think we're going to be in for some fireworks here, that is for certain. Steve Webster is close enough to do the business still. I've seen him finish races with half the fairing missing where they've had a big banging session in round some of the turns. I remember with Bieland and company in Sweden some time ago. There's the Goodles. Number eight there, I and think. And there's Darren Dixon in fourth place with the Eglofs. That's the Eglofs. Eglofs, number eight, right behind him. Oh, yeah, and as we thought, the Stroyer outfit is going to pull in. I don't know whether they've broken a bit of machinery or whether the passenger has cried enough. <laughs> Possibly a bit of both. There's a bit of smoke coming out from under the bike, so... Uh... In trouble there. There's the Dixons. Now, they are the, the men of the meeting, as far as I'm concerned. That's uh, Darren Dixon and brothers. Abbott and Smith. I saw Abbott and Smith there as well. Some more <laughs> famous British persons doing the business. Lower down the field. I'll look at my chart That's and find out Goodles where it is. in fifth place. Now, the Goodles, uh, number five, I beg you. Oh, Webster looking up the inside of Michelle. A merciless... Closing of the door from Alain Michel. I saw him readying his ball and chain at that point. He was about to take a <laughs> swing then at the Frenchman. You just wouldn't believe these two are the best of friends, would you, these two drivers? No, you're right, I would not. Well, they might be the best of friends at the moment, but of course that's not to, to say that they won't be at the end of the race. Oh, indeed. <laughs> Alain Michel. And there's this, another view at the Stroyer outfit. Uh -huh. As you can see, these things uh, are formed from a carbon fibre box section spar. The front suspension is bolted on the front of it, the engine's hung off the back of it, and the sidecar off the left-hand side of it. As we look at the corkscrew, awaiting the arrival of the leaders. Yes, the director here is practising... Oh, there we go. That's a surprise motorcycle. That looked like Webster in front. I don't think that was a back marker in front of Michelle. It's Steve Webster and Gavin Simmons have taken the lead from Alan Michelle. Well, I'm extremely disappointed at that. While the director was looking at the uh, bare tarmac, there was the most exciting part of the race went on, and Steve Webster, the Englishman, passed the Frenchman for the lead, which uh, I don't suppose we're going to see an action replay of, but uh, Webster's pulled out a bit of a lead. I'm amazed. Now, Webster had some problems in practice with a new Austrian gearbox he's fitted. He had problems with about four ratios out of six. I don't actually know if he's running the thing or not for, full, uh, for, for the race itself, but he's, but he's certainly having no problems now. As you mentioned earlier, Keith, uh, Steve Webster had dreadful sponsorship problems in the middle of last year. His major sponsor went, uh, went broke leaving Steve the best part of £75,000 short on the season's racing budget. He has no new sponsors for this year. Basically, the Avon Tire Company and the Silkaline Oil Company have uh, basically... A Whoa! Dixon confirmed in third still. Egloff from Bornhorst and Abbott and Smith are up into six. Well, you may wonder why that uh, British drivers do so well in sidecars, whereas we all seem to struggle when it comes to um, the other solo classes. And the reason for that is, of course, in Great Britain, the sidecar class classes remain fairly well unchanged over the years, and it's a very competitive class in, in, in Britain. And there are so many good guys at it. There, there is a British tradition of three-wheeler racing as well, of course, that, uh, that counts. 
What's Simon Birchall doing there? Was he taking a tear off, off his uh, helmet, Keith? Or... Well, it didn't look like it to me. It looked like some gesticulations of some kind or another. And uh, the, the thing that obviously is slightly concerning me is that Birchall and Michel, they disappeared into second place fairly quickly, all in the space of a, a couple of blinks of the eye. And Webster managed to pull out that little bit of a lead, which uh, makes me wonder whether they've got a slight problem. It is only slight, obviously, otherwise he wouldn't be able to stay the way he is with Steve Webster. Yes, Webster seemed to jump away a few bike lengths, and that, the gap has remained constant since Steve Webster took the lead. If we see third place battle, look for number 17, Darren and Sean Dixon, uh, and the Edloff twins, Urs and Marcus, number eight. That should be the battle now for third place. Well, I don't know whether I'm right in saying this, but I will anyway. I make enough mistakes during things. So, um, uh, Darren Dixon, is this his first Grand Prix? I'm sure it is his first Grand Prix. It's his Prix. first sidecar Grand Prix, not his first solo Grand well, Prix. Well, I actually meant sidecar. Oh, right, fine. You're, you're picking me up on a technicality there, I love doing that. Well, in yes, that case... Yes, it's his first sidecar Grand Prix, Keith. Well, if he gets a rostrum position in his first sidecar Grand Prix, I've got to say that is a brilliant position. That is absolutely unbelievable. Everybody said... Those people in the know as far as sidecars are concerned that Dixon would do well this year. I didn't really know, I must admit, too. And here he is in third place in the first World Championship Grand Prix for sidecars. And no less an authority than the leader here, Steve Webster, told me 18 months ago when Darren Dixon went back to sidecar racing, before he won the European title, uh, Steve Webster used to race against Darren Dixon in uh, the Marlborough Clubman's Championship and said, whoa, well, Michelle has another dip, there's nothing wrong with Alain Michel now. I'll just sum up on Darren Dixon. Webster has always maintained Darren Dixon is a major sidecar racing talent. Well, he's pretty good fun in the bar as well, which um, everybody will be pleased to know. Especially if he gets a roster in position, I think he's going to be exceptionally good fun. The positions last year were reversed that these men are in. Alain Michel won last year's Grand Prix and sets the fastest lap in this year's Grand Prix. Webster was second last year. They're still five seconds shy of their practice times, Keith. Well, that's a remarkable difference there, uh, Julian. I'm just rustling my paper to see exactly what happened there. Yes, I'm, I'm amazed by that difference. I don't know whether... Uh, I, I actually have no explanation for that, I have to say. Well, who needs an explanation when we're riding sidecars? Steve Webster, well-known Brit and Silkeline sponsored Three wheel. Oh, and it's oh dear. All, here we are. Oh, this is a bit busy. There's Dixon, number 17 now on the Paget supported Yamaha engine three wheeler. And Darren, I think he's looking to. I think that. That's Abbott and Smith, Smith. that's in front of him, the it's other it. British sidecar pair, and that's uh, the Egloff brothers behind them. I got it all right, Julian. And the Egloffs are going for the inside now on Dixon. And Sean Dixon looks over his shoulder and sees Marcus and Urs Egloff. Well, I don't think I'd be tempted to look, actually. I wouldn't. They're all over him like a rash. <laughs> and Abbott and Smith are really... They've come past the pair of these two in the last three laps. They were on a charge. Well, of course, Abbott and Smith finished third here last year, so they're not um, strangers to this particular track, are they? They're not Steve Abbott and Sean Smith. They've been around the sidecar class for a considerable while. And a lot of people have said, said that this couple this year are, are the men to watch. Very good setup, really successful testing. Uh, really successful testing pre season. Like Dixon, wants to watch for this year. That's number six, Steve Abbott and Sean Smith. Then number 17, Darren and Sean Dixon. Then number eight, Marcus and Urs Egloff. That is the battle for third, fourth and fifth places. You're watching Abbott and Smith in the old Yamaha colours. Confirmation there that Webster is still in the lead from Michelle. Steve Abbott now into third from the Dixon brothers. We'll take another short break. Join us again in a moment. As you rejoin us, it's still Webster from Michelle and Abbott. But there is Abbott, there is the Dixons, number 17. Back up, back up with the number six outfit of Steve Abbott and Sean Smith. Well, yeah. I remember Darren Dixon has been a very determined driver in two-wheel stuff, and uh, he looks like he's brought that along with him when it comes to three-wheelers. He doesn't yeah, he look does. like he's going to let Abbott get away from this. 
He does. There's the Goodles, the uh, green outfit going through just there. The Goodles, incidentally, when they won in Hungary last year, were the first... That was the first time in ten years that a, a sidecar Grand Prix has been won by non-world champions. There they are, the Goodles. Well, with a name like Goodle, I suppose you deserve to win one, don't you, really? Another set of Swiss twins. Back there with it's... Webster. That's Webster and Simmons. Now, eight and a half seconds up. I can only think that Alan Michel is now hitting some trouble, Keith. Well, whatever it is, whether it be Webster on his second wind or whatever, the man is leading. He deserves to be in front. He has a quick look over his shoulder there. Well, if Alain Michel's got a problem, he might just be able to dribble home in second place. That's our first look at Rolf Bieland and Kurt Voltisberg this year. Bieland pushes the frontiers of technology when it comes to uh, motorcycle design, when it comes to three-wheelers. The man deserves to do well because of the things that he actually designs into his bike. Obviously injured, but uh, you've only got to look at the bike and see that it's different from everything else. <laughs> Yes, the man who has repeatedly forced the FIF to change the rules because he keeps bending them. And he's in, he's in, he's in sixth place, Rolf Bieland. So, hurt or not, the multi, ex-multi-world champion is doing very well. Let's check uh, Rolf Bieland's curriculum vitae. He's now admits to being 41. Kurt Voltisberg, his passenger, has been with him for a considerable number of years. He's won, as you can see, look at the number of Grand Prix that man has won. Three times a world champion, 56 Grand Prix wins. No one comes near him. And that's amazing, isn't it? 56 Grand Prix wins, and he's only won the world championship three times. There was one year that the sidecars had two world championships, B2A and B2B class. Uh, that gave Rolf the chance to win uh, more than one Grand Prix a meeting. In those days, you could do that on 250 and 350 solos, 50 and 125 solos. And I can't think of many people apart from, let's say, Angel Nieto, who comes anywhere near that sort of record over the years. Certainly not in modern time. Look at that big drift on sideways there, and that was with the sidecar wheel on the inside of the turn. So, uh... <laughs> oh, Dixon, Dixon's, Dixon's back. third. And look at the Eglofs there, coming under severe pressure from Rolf Bieland. Whoops. We have a spin. Barry Brindley and Graham Rose have spun it at the uh, the last corner. Well, this is certainly hotting up now, Julian. This is all going to the wire. We've got Beeland on the charge. Look at this. He's having a look at the inside of... And he's gone past the egg loss <laughs> as well. This is amazing. Beeland is absolutely charging. And the driver, Marcus Egloff, looked across a couple of times, took a double take, saw it was Rolf, and he didn't really try and push him anywhere, did he? One of Rolf Bieland's standard uh, training techniques is he, he likes to box. He's a boxer. Well, Webster leads by a mile with Gavin Simmons in the chair. Silkaleen and Avon sponsored outfit and absolutely miles in front now from Elaine Michel. Elaine Michel must have a problem. I'd like to pay tribute to those two British trade sponsors, Keith Silkaleen and Avon. Uh, for supporting Steve Webster really quite generously this year. They really have allowed a multiple world champion, one of the best ambassadors British motorcycle sport has had uh, in the past 10 years to go Grand Prix racing this year. Let's, take, let's check out Steve Webster's history. That's Tony Baker in a set of letters one of my old magazines helped get him, by the way. Haven't helped him, have they? <laughs> No, obviously not. Well, they look fairly... Um, they must be up a slip road somewhere because they look fairly casual while they get undressed. Undressed for the cameras. Perhaps the map faced the wrong way. Took a wrong turn. There's Alain Michel now dropping back considerably. In, still in second place with a comfortable gap still over the Dixons in third. Comfortable now, of course, because Egbert Stroyer has had to uh, pull in. Yep, he's got... 18 seconds before Darren Dixon turns up. Let's check the current world champion CV. Alan Michel, 39, are you sure? Simon Birchall from Ghoul in the northeast of England is his passenger. Alan won here last year. 17 wins over a career that spans the best part of 15 years in Grand Prix racing and four runner up positions in the World Sidecar Championship.
There they are, the world champions, Alain Michel and Simon Birchall. Well, that could be any reason for him slipping back, of course. We can only speculate from here. He might be a sticky gear shift. He might, might have cramp. It is the first Grand Prix of the year, after it all. It has been known. That's Barry Smith and David Smith in their Windle outfit. Now, that's a bit of a museum piece now again, but nowadays by Grand Prix standards. About to be lapped by Michel. They have already been lapped by this pair. Oh, here comes Big Land. That's Abbott and, S Abbott and Smith are about to get the Rolf Bieland Championship. The championship treatment. That's the battle for fourth place. Abbott, six, Bieland, four. Well, for a man with a broken shoulder, Rolf Bieland's diving all right, Keith. Well, he did say it was a little bone that he broke, obviously one that doesn't count very much. <laughs> Bieland just sweeps through, makes him look silly. So that's Abbott and Smith relegated back another place. And Bielan charges on. Next man on the list is Darren Dixon and Sean. That'll be interesting. Well, it will, because Dixon is a fighter, that's for certain. I don't know whether Bielan is going to get the amount of track that he needs for this job, but... Uh... I, I was really impressed when uh, Bielan came up to the Egloffs, the way Marcus Egloff dub did a double take, saw his fellow countrymen and did not. That's Theo van Kempen and Jan Kite, the Dutch veteran Dutch racer, pulling in. Well, missed the turning for pit lane there, but uh, not got far to walk anyway, just a short hop over the concrete wall. A fairly casual sidecar, people, when they pull. Oh, he's got a bit of a... He's got a um, stiff leg, definitely. He's yep. got a shake in the leg. And here's Abbott and Smith passing the... Uh, That's uh, Frank and Holger Voigt they're passing. Back well, markers. I'm glad you said that. Now then. Number six. Steve Abbott and Sean Smith. The Krauser engine LCR like normal. Well, the Egloffs were getting the treatment from that back marker then. The Egloffs didn't really find a lot of room on the track when perhaps they should have done. Here we are, number four, Rolf Bieland on a charge, chasing Darren and Sean Dixon. And being pursued enthusiastically by number six, Steve Abbott and Sean Smith. I think enthusiastically uh, rather than in much hope, I have to say it. You can always tell uh, Steve Abbott he's had that old Yamaha America replica paint scheme on his outfits for years now. Number eight, the Egloff twins. Marcus driving, Earth the passenger. Well, of course, last year, Beeland broke down four laps from the end, so um, there's time yet for a repeat performance. Beeland has a name, as you mentioned earlier, Keith, amongst the sidecar boys for being an inveterate experimenter. He cannot leave anything alone. He has to try and improve it. He experiments all the time. This year, this year, Rolf Bieland has sworn, apparently, to keep things standard, not to interfere with something that works. No one actually believes he'll keep to that promise. Well, this man's not interfering with uh, too much. Race leader Steve Webster and Gavin Simmons doing the absolute business. Faultless ride. Did the tough stuff when they needed to early on with Elaine Michel. Dispatched the Frenchman. Trying to get back the mantle that they probably rightly deserve. World champions. I'm not going to argue against Alan Michel having a world title for his for his career and his talent over the years. Uh, I think it was the addition of Alan himself says that Simon Birchall made all the difference to him. Alan was thinking of retiring when the offer was so was Simon Birchall. Uh, when they were put together, I think by Steve Webster actually suggested it to one or other party. That's what I understand, yeah, I think you're absolutely right there. And they decided to give it a go last year. And they're slowing, that looked to me like they were slowing then. There's Steve Webster on the left with the glasses, Gavin Simmons on the right. That had me worried then as they came down the hill, they definitely looked like they were a little bit slower then. I hope it's not the gearbox problems he had in practice. Doesn't look like it there. They're going well. Well, they are there, Keith, I think. Well, I think my heart just missed a beat there as they <laughs> sweep through the start and finish. Flat out, sixth gear left-hander. Around 155 miles an hour, which takes a bit of hanging on to when you're that close to the ground. 155 miles an hour must feel like about 400 miles an hour when you're that close to the ground. Here we are with the scenic view again. Yes. Why, but San Francisco's are. that way. 
I, uh, I know that Eurosport is a European channel. We are well aware of that here in the commentary box. But British motorcycle racing does owe a debt to Steve Webster. He was uh, the one man through the lean years in this country the general public knew something about. Uh, he won British Grand Prix twice on the row, and that was something the general public really enjoyed seeing. Very spectacular, and he is a fine ambassador for motorcycle racing. Steve Webster, number three, leading from Alan Michel and Darren Dixon, number 17. Rolf Beland, wonderfully now through to fourth place. Sean Abbott, fifth, and the Egloff twins, sixth. There they are, number eight, the Egloffs. Well, Darren Dixon must certainly be catching his, uh, crossing his fingers, I should say, for... Oh, as, as the Egloffs have a look at the inside of uh, Sean Abbott. But as I was about to say, the Dixons must be keeping their fingers crossed as far as that third place rostrum position that they hold four seconds over Veland at the moment. Uh, this is a good dice here between Steve Abbott and Sean Smith and the Egloff twins. The Egloffs looking <laughs> every... <laughs> oh, can they do it here going into the corkscrew? Oh, dear me. It's certainly Smith was not going to let him have any more room than he actually needed there, was he? But <laughs> the Egloff had to breathe in, I think. I saw the motorcycle breathe in as well then. He's a hard man, is Steve Smith. <laughs> well, you need to be when you're on the grass. <laughs> It was definitely a bit of tough riding. The Egloffs looked to me like they were making a bit of a determined effort to gain the place. <laughs> Interesting that the Swiss teams, the Egloffs and the B and the Beeland crew, use these synthetic Kevlar riding suits. I can't call them leathers because they're because they're not. They're aramid fibre Kevlar suits. Have that sort of matte finish to them. Wide line there from Marcus Egloff in order to try and get the power down to get right in the slipstream here. Now, whether it's going to do him any good, it looks like Steve Abbott certainly got the motorcycle running well. But the Egloffs drive at them out of that turn, just a little bit more traction. <laughs> With the third wheel on the dirt. Well, we don't really need it anyway. And another look up the inside from the Egloff twins. Oh, dear. Well, I think there's going to be a swap of paint scheme fairly soon. They are that close, folks. Steve Abbott and Sean Smith third here last year. Yes, they have been on the rostrum a few times. They've never won a Grand Prix, Steve Abbott and Sean Smith. He said, thinking back, and I'm sure they haven't. They have been on the rostrum, as Keith just pointed out. Here come the Egloffs again as they come down under the corkscrew. It's so fast down here on the sidecars. Well, Laguna is actually quite tight. Oh, and dear me, that was a mistake there by Steve Abbott. He made a mistake coming down into that turn, just found himself a little bit too wide in the corner. And uh, Egloff didn't need another invitation, did he? Into fifth place go the Egloff twins. It looked like... Uh, like Steve Abbott pushed the front wheel a bit there, coming out of the corkscrew around the right-hander, ran wide, and the Egloffs nip through. Thank you very much. Into fifth place for the Swiss Twins. Well, Abbott's got it all to do now, that's for certain. So uh, let's see how he recovers from the initial shock of running on a little bit there, I think, uh, pushing the front end just a fraction too hard. Lovely shot of the Egloff Twins drifting their outfit around that right-hander. This position, the right-handers, where the passenger lies over the back of the outfit, strangely, is the hardest, harder, physically, for the passenger. He's getting beaten to death by the, by the outfit jumping up there underneath him. This position, the left-hander, is apparently a lot easier because you brace yourself with your legs. Your legs take the strain. Well, of course, um, being beaten to death by the bike beats being beaten to death by your driver if you don't get your weight <laughs> over the rear wheel to keep the power down. So, uh, I don't know, the, the best of either evils there. Oh, you've got to be so fit to be a sidecar passenger. Four laps to go for the leader, Steve Webster, the triple ex-world champion from near York in the north of England, and his passenger, Gavin Simmons. Gavin, a fitness freak, you'll be unsurprised to hear. I'm not making any comment about that, sitting in the chair. <laughs> But he's doing a good job for him, there's no doubt about that. And the American crowd, who have never seen world-class sidecar racing before three years ago when the Grand Prix came here, do like 
what they uh, they call the side hacks. Well, they actually do like unusual sports in America, don't they? I mean, they go for all sorts of strange things, so... The leaders. Second oh, place. Oh. And Michelle there with the front end well locked up coming into that turn. That might well be an indication of the problems he's suffering, perhaps the balance bias. They can adjust these braking systems as they go along, like the car racers can actually do. They can change the balance from the front to the rear, from the side to the back to the, the front again to suit each track. Usually it's done set up in, in practice and they don't mess around with it during the race. But uh, certainly then he was running on with the front end, chattering away and squealing into that turn. Perhaps Michel has that problem. That's yeah. Alain Michel on the right there, his passenger Simon Birchall, the Englishman on the left. And of course, part of sidecar racing, Keith, much like solo racing, is, is conserving your reserves. And uh, in sidecar terms, your tyres and your brakes are the reserves. You can wear them out, overheat everything in the start and have nothing left at the end. Maybe Alain has a few tyre problems, I really couldn't say. Well, having problems, he had the Zerberg brothers right in the middle of his... Uh exit of the first turn onto the start and finish straight there they didn't really seem to know where they were going at the time and uh, fortunately managed to pull themselves out of the way he's definitely got a front end problem there he had it again going into that turn looks like the front's pattering away at the uh, under braking i'll readily admit to not being a sidecar expert <laughs> <laughs> when it comes to the actual driving of these things because you wouldn't get me near one <laughs> let alone in one. We'll see if we can rectify that as the season goes on, folks. I'd, uh, I'd personally pay money to see Keith Ewan going around a track in a sidecar outfit. Well, if you'd pay money, then I might well be persuaded, Julian, because uh, the likelihood of that, I'm told from uh, <laughs> our production crew at Eurosport, they'd all like to see <laughs> Julian parted with money, so... <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, the leader, Steve Webster, passenger Gavin Simmons, a very comfortable lead in this, the first round of a 1991 World Championship for the sidecars. Number 15, they have just lapped Barry Brindley and Graham Rose. And poor Barry will be definitely fed up of seeing the back of Steve Webster. He sees it a lot in British Championship racing. Two laps to go in the opening round of the 1991 Sidecar Championship. Yeah, Gavin Simmons doing his um, grass-cutting impersonation. Well, he needs a little blade on his backside, and he'd be well away. I think Gavin's uh, been given the, giving his leathers on his left buttock a severely hard time. That's now, Steve Webster in the specs on the left. Not a flattering picture, I have to say. Gavin Simmons on the right. So as Steve Webster heads toward the flag to tell him it's the last lap of the opening Grand Prix. Let's check the race order. Webster and Simmons lead for Michel and Birchall, the Dixon brothers in third, and Rolf Bieland and Kurt Voltisberg up to fourth. That is a splendid achievement for the injured Bieland. Yes, Steve Webster now has over 13 seconds in hand over these men, the reigning world champions, Michel and Birchall. Fingers crossed for, for Steve and Gavin that they can have an untroubled last lap on their way to the chequered flag. Well, there's Michel. Second place and suffering some kind of a problem. Certainly a front runner earlier on, but um, hanging on to his second place easily. Here we have the leaders on their last lap now, number three. The question that now comes to my mind is, can the Dixons hang on to third place for a rostrum in their first Grand Prix? <laughs> and aren't these motorcycles quiet? It's uh, wonderful sound quality we're receiving from America. <laughs> well, we're... Perhaps we ought to sit here brooming. <laughs> after you, Julian. No, no, Keith, after you. Steve Webster, number three, leads oh, the Keith, American Grand Prix. And then we get, oh, we got a, a smattering of sound there. So uh, Steve Webster and Gavin Simmons lead the first Grand Prix of 1991 on their last lap. 
They'll make it to the end, I'm sure, this year. It's downhill from here, into the corkscrew for the last time. Simmons over the rear wheel, thumbs up from Steve. And oh, we, and we good to, This is good to see, Keith, good to see, not just for British motorcycle racing. I don't think uh, the rest of the sidecar community will begrudge the English team this victory. No problem with the back markers there. Steve Webster cuts his way through onto the last bend of the last lap to win the first <laughs> Grand Prix <laughs> of the sidecar year. Yes, and Webster and Simmons win it. Let's look now for number one. Alan Michel and Simon Birchall, will we get to see them? Meanwhile, Webster and Simmons must be very relieved, Ned. Steve Webster will now be extremely pleased that he bothered to go racing this year, that he worked over winter to get the outfit sorted out, to get the sponsorship together, to enable him to have another go at the world title that he really does desperately want back. Well, of course, the one thing I like about sidecar riders, their passengers and their crew, are that um, they celebrate in fine style. Unlike the solo riders, the, the, the sidecar crews celebrate together, yep. drink a lot together, enjoy yep. themselves together. You might see Steve Webster, when he's waving his hand, his left hand up in the air there, he's got a cord attached to it. That's uh, not a drip feed or a <laughs> remote control, that's actually his... <laughs> That's actually his kill button cord. That's his ignition kill lanyard. And Darren and Sean Dixon did indeed get on the rostrum in their first Grand Prix.